Hello everyone, in 2014, what a year for Australian rugby. Mm. Plenty of good, bad and indifferent. And Greg Groudon, the best story of the year? Undoubtedly the Waratahs and Michael Checker. Exactly, that was the crux of the season. What the Waratahs did revived the game for a short while. <laughs> now the situation, what you've got to understand with the Waratahs is that they've been the problem child of Australian rugby for 20 years. So much talent wasted through bad administration, some pretty ordinary coaching at times, and some egotistical lunacy among the playing ranks. But the last two years, Michael Checker got it together. And he did it in two ways. One, he changed the culture of the Waratahs. The Waratahs are renowned for being like an old boys network, <laughs> like hanging around in couches in the bean bags, thinking they're superstars, rock stars, doing not much. So what he did first up, he got rid of that culture. He made it, basically made them tough. And he also decided, head office, get lost. You've got nothing to do with this team, so we don't want all the jersey tuggers here. Go away. Two, he got them fit, and that's most crucial. The Waratahs were renowned. You talk to the other teams. They thought they were soft, and they used to be able to get over in the last 10 minutes because their preparation wasn't good. So Checker did the simple thing. He just flogged them. So for the lead-up, those three or four months before this season, he just hammered them. And there were these famous stairs, about 150 stairs in Coogee, yeah that he decided, okay, this is gonna be my training regime. Up and down they went, up and down they went. And I remember going out and seeing him, I think at the start of year in January, February, and talking to Checker and saying, mate, this mob look good. And he said, mate, watch this for the next two hours. And he just hammered them, and that's what he did. They were fit, and they played great football. For and sure. it was that moment when the Waratahs won the final, and I was out there, it was, I have not seen a moment out at the, the Sydney grounds since the World Cup. I think yeah. it was one of those moments where we, oh, were, all, we were all Waratahs as well. So. Oh, well, the crowd were there, everything was there, but most importantly, they played great football, attacking football, gave away the box kicks, and you know, Pot Gita, what a, what a change, transformation he did that team. It was, I think, of all, I think that was the greatest transformation the Australian team has, has been involved in in Super Rugby history. And that's super rugby history, and we're talking about transformations. We're, we're looking at, at the Wallabies, and we've gone from good to, I'm not sure whether this is bad or indifferent, all the, the, the year-long schmozzle that's ended up in, in Ewan McKenzie's decision to, to quit. Oh, it's, it's a shocking story, and there's so much more of it to come out. It's, it's rugby at its worst. You've got the Australian Rugby, rugby Union in disarray, disgraceful administration, cover-ups, lies, journalists being misled and you've got a situation where you have judiciary hearings involving Kirtley Bill where important people are not involved in the hearing and all I can say is there is a number of administrators the Australian Rugby Union should leave now I've written about it Bill Pulver should go Michael Hawker should go John Eel should go a number of others on that board should go because what has happened the last few weeks has been abominable and you've got a game which is close to insolvency and these guys have known for a long while what was wrong with this game and have sat on their hands. It's, it's a real shame, isn't it? Oh, and well, yes, because the situation was, you had a situation where the season was on such a high when the Waratahs won that final. Then within two weeks, it was all to yeah. pot. Went to Auckland, they got absolutely hammered and then all this stuff came about. It's been hovering for so long. The players, no, let's just say, Ewan McKenzie lost the, the support of the players 11 to 12 months ago and it just festered and festered and eventually erupted with the, the Curtly Bill airport incident, and, air, airline incident. I, and I guess one of the other big stories is, and we've heard it all season long, the, the story about the ARU finances. They're in trouble. Oh, enormous trouble because I broke a story a few weeks ago about the presentation which was made by the ARU at their annual general meeting and they basically admitted that they could be insolvent by next year. They've, they've admitted that in a, in a presentation. And also, a number of my sources who've been talking to ARU staff basically say that there's not much money left in, that, in the coffers. And this is a major worry because they are hanging on this, this television deal which mm -hmm. is about to come out. My understanding is the television deal is very good and it probably will maybe save the game. But what will happen with this television deal, there's going to be some ARU officials, in particular Bill Pulver, who'll be going chest and saying, <laughs> I was heavily involved in that. Rubbish, absolute rubbish. The reason why this TV deal will be good is primarily because of the global money, the European, the B Sky B money, and increased um, content from South Africa 
and New Zealand. It's got nothing to do with Australia. I've talked to television executives at both pay TV and free-to-air level here, and they say their negotiations with the RU were an embarrassment. So if Paul Porver takes any credit, he is kidding himself. And that's a, that, that is a real shame. But I guess, we, you know, it's, we've talked about the Waratahs. They weren't the only high spot of the season. Mm. And certainly if we think of that third test against France, the, the bright Saturday sunshine, a day game. Well, how many times do we have to tell these dunderhead administrators, people love day games. There's nothing better than going to a game at two o'clock with the kids, you know, like what they've done at the, the Sydney Football Stadium, they've opened up the Sydney Creek Ground, so everyone goes over and has picnics, they have picnics <laughs> in the park. It's an occasion. It's like going to Twickenham in, in London on a, on a Saturday afternoon. It's an occasion. But, and then the game finishes at five o'clock, people then go to the nearby pubs, have a dinner, they're home at a respectable hour. And it's great, and the players love it. And also, you talk to the pay TV people, they don't mind it either because it revives interest. So they've got to, the ARU have got to really seriously say, we've got to have at least two day tests a year because they work. Yep. The punters love it, and it's time the ARU actually gave the punters something rather than treat them like rubbish. And I guess that one of the final, well, not one of the final key story that we're going to discuss is, is the Wallabies against the All Blacks. Mm. Obviously, we've got the shellacking in, in Auckland, a draw in Sydney, and a very close loss in Brisbane. When are we going to? When, when are the Wallabies going to beat you? I think it's going to happen pretty close, Andy, because I, you saw the clues here in both the, the the Brisbane games. You know, there was something there. Now, the, the the third game was a different test because you had a situation where the players weren't playing for the coach and they weren't playing for the Australian Rugby Union. They played for themselves. Yeah. But it was interesting the style they played in that final test, where you. The Hugh McKenzie was sort of thrown out. Of the he, he was by token coach, but he, he was left alone. It, and the senior players took over. And they played the Waratahs game plan. There was no box kicking until Nick White <laughs> came on. They played flashy football. They played good recycle football. And it was checker football. So you saw the promise there. With Michael Checker coming in, I think there is absolutely no doubt the Waratahs, the, not, not the Waratahs, but I say Wallabies because you've got certain <laughs> Queensland journalists who will say it's a New South Wales conspiracy, <laughs> you dopes. It, <laughs> it is, with Checker there, I can guarantee you they are a good chance of winning the Blue Slate Cup next year. We'll say it now, say it now. I think they're a really good chance because you'll have a team with him. So first year, Blue Slate Cup, I, I vaguely remember what it looks like, could be back here next year. What a great way to end the story. We're talking about Bladers Low Cup 2015 coming back to Australia.